Hello, friends. I'm Donna Clement Petrushka, and I am honored to invite you to something truly extraordinary, the Kim Clement Prophecy Vault. Now you can gain unprecedented access to my father's entire digitized video archive, every prophetic moment, every powerful teaching, Every anointed worship session is now available to you in the Prophecy Vault. We've also enhanced the Prophecy Database, meticulously updating it with new video content and profound insights. Plus, I'm excited to share that my dad's special School of the Prophets teachings are included, offering you deep, transformative lessons on hearing God's voice and understanding His revelations. As part of your membership, you'll also gain access to my prophecy blog, where I break down and analyze my father's prophecies, connecting them to current events. This blog will provide you with exclusive insights and a deeper understanding of how God's Word is unfolding right now. And we're offering something truly special, exclusive analysis sessions available only to members of the Prophecy Vault. These sessions will go beyond the surface, providing in-depth exploration of specific prophecies and their implications for today and the future. Your partnership is crucial. Not only will you gain access to these incredible resources, but you'll also help us continue the vital work of preserving, digitizing, and adding new Kim Clement material to the archives. So, I'm inviting you to step into the Kim Clement Prophecy Vault. Let's embark on this journey of revelation together, and I can't wait to see you inside. something on that bass, what do you think? Hello everyone, welcome to House of Destiny. This is your boy Charles of the Ritz coming to you. Welcome to Perspectives of the Prophetic. Guys, I got a word, man, that is so exciting, and I know that you guys are going to be really blessed by this. God spoke to me uh, the other day, and he, he he started speaking to me about the Joshua and Caleb generation, that this generation, which I'm a part of, and maybe most of you are a part of, that he is going to pour out of his spirit upon us and we are going to begin to operate with the same energy and vigor that we had years ago. In other words, it'll be like we haven't aged at all spiritually. Now, some of you may have some aches and some pains and stuff like that. But what God is saying and what God said through me was this, that he is about to come up on his Joshua's and his Caleb's. Those that have stood the test of time, those that have said yea to his word, yea to his promises that have not, you know, that have not fallen. You may have wavered a little bit. We may have like stumbled a little bit, but we got back up and we said, you know what? You can't keep us down because we trust in our God. We trust in the Lord God Almighty. I'm talking to you and God is speaking to you. So get ready, guys, because this is the time for us to go into this harvest field and reap this beautiful, powerful harvest. So before I get into this word, I'm going to play this video that Don A posted. And it just gave me so much joy because it lined up with what God showed me. Check this out. This is really, truly going to bless you. What do you see? What is it that you see? Have you been blinded? Have you been blinded by fear? Have you been blinded by unbelief? Have you been blinded by the very things, images that have been placed before you? Have you been blinded by the report of the majority? Have you been blinded to take your land by the voice of the majority? So today, I will show you my magnificence, how 
by removing from your eyes the blinders that you may see the land as Joshua and Caleb saw the land. Young men stood and quietened the people and said, we are well able to take the land. We are well able to take this land. Can you see it? Can you see the grapes? Can you see the potential? Can you see the trees? Oh, the tree, by the way. God says when Moses crossed over with the children of Israel and crossed through the sea and they got to the other side, the prophetess Miriam said, He will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea and with timbrel and with harp, with drums and the sound of magnificence, they praised him. But the very next event that took place was they came to the place of Maria, which is bitterness. And the waters were bitter and they could not drink and they began to starve and they began to die because the waters were bitter. And they came to Moses and they said, we, we complained to him and said, Moses, what do we do now? And Moses looked around to see if there was a solution. He looked and the Spirit of the Lord showed him a tree Hear this not only for the time of Moses, but for the time of now. For the time of the tree to take away the bitterness of the waters has come, says the Lord. For Moses cut down the tree and he threw it into the bitter waters and suddenly the bitter waters were made sweet. Do you hear the word of the Lord? The time of bitterness will come to an end for a season. But I shall take a tree, that certain thing that I will give to technology and I will call sweet, sweetness to come out of the waters. But there is one tree that everybody shall look at that brought sweetness from the bitterness and that is the tree that came from Calvary. A tree that had blood shed upon it. It was the cross of Calvary. And that same tree has been cast into the waters of bitterness to bring sweetness, sweetness for a season. Can you see it? For the prophet now is opening your eyes to see what is ahead of you. Open your eyes and see it and I will make your bitter waters sweet says the Lord. Wow, guys, what a powerful, powerful word. What a powerful word. Can you see? Can you see what God is saying right now? See, he wants us to have perception. He wants us not to look at our situation or our circumstances and to allow those circumstances to have authority or to have a foothold in our lives. Because you see, we have been blinded. You see, the prognosticators, the prophets of Baal, the religious, the naysayers has, you know, they have been telling us what God isn't doing. They've been telling us that we should do this or we should do that. The religious has been saying, no, God is not speaking. God is not moving. God is not prophesying. God is not doing these things. But God said, can you see? Can you see that the things that I am doing, it is indeed taking place. He wants us to know this, guys. He says, are you blinded by them? And so what we're saying, and this is the reason why I wanted to bring this message. No, for the Joshua's and the Caleb generation is going to be just like Joshua and Caleb back when God sent the 12 into the land to spy out the land. But 10 came back with a negative report. 10 came back saying, no, we can't do it because of this. No, we can't do it because of that. But two says, yes, we can. This is why God dropped this word into my spirit, guys, because we have entered a time now to where we have giants. We have giants that we have faced and that we are facing and that is trying to control, trying to steer us in the way of unrighteousness. But God is saying, my Joshua's and my Caleb's, this generation will join forces with this younger generation. And we will bring about a revolution, a revival, a breakthrough, however you want to call it, like the world has never seen. Because remember that word that Kim got back in 2013, he was taken to 2027 and he saw the old and the new, the young and the old coming together, creating a new sound. That's Joshua's and the Caleb generation coming together with this generation that has come up under such a violent attack. They have survived. And God is saying, watch and see. You must see what I see because 
I have kept you for this hour. So guys, be excited. He mentioned something about two trees. And this is what just really just got me so excited. Because when he mentioned about the first tree, he connected it to technology. Well, guys, I'm going to. I'm going to drop a name right now, and, and you should Google it if, if you haven't heard this before. Just search it out. You know what the meaning of Elon Musk's name is in, he is in Hebrew? It means oak tree. It means oak tree. And God said in that powerful word about a tree that is connected to technology. Do you know that Elon Musk, yes, he's done some strange things. There's no doubt about it. He's done some strange things, but he's also, he has done some very powerful and good things. One of the things that I know that, uh, and I'm not sure, uh, well, no, it's not a rumor. It's actually in the making. He's coming up with a Tesla phone. To, and he calls it the iPhone killer. Do you realize that Elon, he doesn't like the new iPhone 16? He doesn't because of how it is set up. It is set up to totally keep a tab on everyone that owns it. In other words, it's a spy machine. And he he's even said that he doesn't want it in his company nowhere. So that's very interesting. He's even saying the same thing about Mac computers, the new computers with the new operating system. Because, see, this is what they want to do. They want to control. They want to be able to keep tabs on everyone, to, 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 to spoil your privacy, to come against you and to say, uh-uh, you don't have any privacy. We want to know and we will know everything about you. You see, that's what the devil wants. Elon said he doesn't like that. So he's coming up with a new phone. It's called the Tesla phone. He calls it the iPhone killer. Well, do you remember that powerful word that Prophet Kim got about? He see the end. He see the day of the end of the iPhone. So God showed the prophet this. I don't have this in my notes right now. So I, I um, because it's not a part of my notes, it just dropped into my spirit. But guys, I want you to know that when God dropped this word through the prophet, this is a noun word. We are entering in to this season to where the old would join with the young. And we are going to produce a sound that the world has never heard. Us, Joshua and Caleb, God is saying, be encouraged. You have not been left out. You have stood the test of time. You have said yes to his word. You have persevered through all that this devil and these devils has heaped upon us. We have persevered. You have made it. Get ready for the kingdom of God is truly about to manifest on each and every one of us. Okay. That's what's going down. All right. So know this, guys, that it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter. I'm a little slow. I got a little arthritis. Don't worry about it because see, when the anointing come up on you, it's going to, it, it, it's going to eradicate that. Okay. I'm proof of that. You know, I got a bad ankle. I don't know what I did to my ankle. I don't know what I did to it, guys, but I was in Tampa before uh, Milton came through. It was the weekend before Milton came through Tampa. I was ministering in Tampa. And so I, I did I did the Saturday morning service. And let me tell you guys something. You see, God spoke a word through Prophet Kim. And this is what he said through Kim. OK, he said it to both Kim and I. He said this. He said for 18 more years. I will praise God with the same energy and vigor that I have done in the last 20 years. God is saying to all of his Joshua's and Caleb's male and female supernaturally, supernaturally he is going to pour out of his spirit upon this chosen uh, remnant. This is what God. So I said that wrong guys. Let me tell you what God said to me first. And then I'll read this word because this is a word that God gave me. Okay. Like I said, guys, I'm excited, and so I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Kim called me uh, back in 2014. He told me to come back to his house because God gave him a word. So in essence, what God said through Kim was that, Charlie, for 18 more years, this is what you're going to do. Because he first asked me, he said, what does the number 18 mean to you? And I didn't know what it was. I said, I don't know. And then so he said, well, 18, uh, uh, the, the, I think it's the 18th letter in the Hebrew means life. And God is saying, Charlie, for 18 more years, he said, you will worship God with the same energy and vigor that you've had the last 20 years. That was a promise from God that God gave to me. 
This took place in Tampa this weekend. I got a bad ankle, guys. I got a stretched tendon in my right ankle. And sometimes, man, it's hard for me to walk on it. But when the anointing hit me, and especially when it hit me in Tampa, it was like my foot was 100% healed. Man, I was dancing all over the stage. Man, I was prophesying. I was having a great old time. I felt no pain. I didn't get tired. Nothing slowed me down. Why? Because of the promise of God's word. You see, when you receive his word and you say yes to it, you walk in the promise of that word, then the manifestation of it will truly take place. It's been happening in my life. I know it's going to happen with you. And then this is what God said to me to give to you today. For 18 more years, I will praise God with the same energy and vigor that I have done the last 20 years. That's what I just told you, right? Well, God is saying to all of his Joshua's and Caleb's, male and female, supernaturally, he is going to pour out of his spirit upon this chosen remnant, talking about us the Joshua and the Caleb's, and we shall have supernatural youth. It will be like we are 20 years younger, 30 years younger, 40 years younger for some, okay? Because in this season of such warfare and iniquity and tyranny, God says that his Joshua's and his Caleb's will truly be likened unto the two patriots in the Bible. They were 80 plus years old, but they went to war with the 20 year olds and the 20 year olds could not see that they were 80 years of age at all because of how they move. They, the 20 years of, wait a minute, this dude 80 years old, but he's acting like me. Okay. That is what was happening. And God is saying, this is what's going to happen and, and, and is happening to you and I. Okay. So this is what God has promised. Okay. He gave me that supernatural energy that day. And man, I was just all over the place. And I'm telling you right now, God is coming upon this generation. Are you going to be part of the 10 or part of the two? Remember when Joshua, when, no, when Moses sent the 12 into the land to spot out the land where the Canaanites were. Okay. Let's go to, let's go to scripture and let's just look at it. All right. Let's go to numbers. I'm reading out of the King James version. Numbers 13. Okay. Verses one and two. This is what it says. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am given to the children of Israel from each tribe of their fathers. You shall send a man, everyone, a leader among them. So God told Moses to collect the leaders out of each tribe of Israel. There's 12 tribes, right? So 12 leaders went to spy out the land. 12 leaders. You see, the Bible says when much is given, much is required. They were chosen to be leaders. They wanted to be leaders. So they went in to spy out the land. So when much is given, much is required, right? So now let's let's continue to read on. Now in Numbers 13, verses 7, uh, 17 through 20, this is what it says. So then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up this way into the south. OK, and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak. Few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now, the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So he told them, go and see indeed what it is. Now, God had already told them that he was giving them a land full of milk and honey with grapes, with, 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 with splendor, a glorious land. That's what God said. So God sent these men into this land, right? We know the story, but why did he send them in there? He sent them there to show them his goodness, to show this is what I'm going to give you. This is what I have blessed you with. You already have it. You see, when God says, I'm going to give you something, we have to see it the way God sees it. Because if God says he's given it to you, you already have it. Because in God's eyes, you have it already. You already have it. Okay? So, 
they were supposed to go in there with that mindset. All right. Now, when they went in there, God didn't mention anything about giants. He didn't mention nothing about giants. But that's what they saw. God wasn't concerned about the giants. He wasn't concerned about those Anarchs, uh, uh, the, uh, the, well, whoever, the, I think it's Anarchs is how you pronounce it, okay? He wasn't concerned about that, okay? Numbers 13, 31 through 33, this is what uh, the word says here. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, all right? So this is what the men, 10 of the men, this is what they said. We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies in the land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Now, there's, there's scripture in Numbers that speaks about how long they were there. You see, they spent 40 days there, remember? They were 40 days in that land. 40 days speaks of a probationary period or uh, a uh, testing uh, uh, period, okay? You know, 40-day fast, it speaks of that, getting rid of flesh so, so that you can step into everything that God wants you to step into. They were there for 40 days, and the only thing that they could come back with was that the giants were there, all right? So let's continue to read. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants. Okay, let me read it again. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, who came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were like grasshoppers in their sight. You see, they saw themselves as grasshoppers. And so since they saw themselves as grasshoppers, they determined within their mind that they saw us as grasshoppers. What do you see? What do you see, people? What do you see? Do you see what the naysayers are saying? Do you see what the prognosticators are saying? The prophets of Baal, which is the mainstream media? Are you seeing what they are saying? Or are you seeing what God has shown you what God sees. That's the question here. And let me prophesy to you, encourage you. We see what God sees. Okay. So the people came back and they complain. They complain to Moses saying, we can't take this land. Why did you bring us here to a land? We, we can't, we can't deal with these people. We were doing much better in Egypt. Every time the people of Israel came against what they considered a stronghold. They always wanted to go back to Egypt. You see, that's what faithlessness does. Faithlessness takes you back to where you were in bondage, takes you back to where you were beneath something. Okay? God, but faith rises you above it. It was faith that allowed Peter to be able to walk on the water. Until he began to look back. When he began to look around, he began to look back and he began to sink. You see, that's what God doesn't want us to do. All right. All right. So they begin to speak like this. But listen to what Joshua and Caleb said. Listen to what they said. Numbers 14, 6 through 10. And I'm going to end with this. But Joshua, the son of Nun. And Caleb, the son of Zephaniah, I can't pronounce these names, so excuse me, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed. Listen to their vernacular. They are like bread. In other words, they said, man, we can make sandwiches out of these guys. Are you kidding? Let's do this. If God says it, we can do it. So he says, they are like bread. 
Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. But look what the congregation, look what the people said. And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. To stone them. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of Midian before all the children of Israel. So even before the glory of the Lord, they came against the Lord. So the anger of God was, man, it had revved up against them. All right. They wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb. Or in other words, they wanted to kill the promise of God. They, they walked in such fear and they walked in such a faithlessness that they were killing the word of God, not receiving it. Because if you, st if you wanted to stone the, the, stone the ones that were receiving it, you are actually stoning God. You are actually cursing God. That's what they were doing. They wanted to kill the word of God. God's anger, anger was kindled against them. So God led the complainers out into the wilderness for 40 years, for 40 years to get rid of that evil, faithless generation. And the 10 men that actually brought the report, they came down with a pestilence and died instantly. So those 10 men that brought the bad, bad report, they didn't even get a chance to at least dwell in the wilderness for 40 years. Man. That's our God. But Joshua and Caleb, this is what the Lord said. Numbers 14, 29 and 31. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness. All of you who were numbered according to your entire number from 20 years old and above, except for Caleb, the son of Zephaniah and Joshua, the son of Nun. But you shall by no means enter the land which I swore I will make you dwell in. But your little ones whom you said will be victims. Okay. Your little ones whom you said will be victims. I will bring in and they shall know the land which you have despised. I'm saying this to you, Joshua and Caleb, right now. That the little ones, okay, this generation that the devil tried to take out. God has saved us to go in with them, to take the kingdom by force, to take this land, okay? The kingdoms of this world. The devil thinks he owns it, but he doesn't. Guys, this is our time. This is our time. When Caleb was 85 years old and Joshua was the, uh, was the leader, they was the same age. They both was just as fit as the young men, the Lord said that they would go in with to take the land. So notice everyone, God is going to use you. God is going to use you. It doesn't matter what your situation is. If you're walking, get ready because God is getting ready to use you. And if you are in line with this word that I'm giving right now, okay, and you are maybe crippled, maybe you, 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 you may be even in a wheelchair. I'm going to release this word right now. I'm going to release this to you right now. Rise up. Rise up and allow God to use you. You may not be able to walk, but God is going to use you even where you are right now so that you can step into everything that God has called you to and watch and see how God uses you. Don't look at your current situation and say, well, I'm unable to do it. Don't be like the 10, but be like the two. Be a true Joshua and Caleb so that we can take the land, take the kingdom by force. Okay, just to show you, just to encourage you, I want to show you this Joshua and this Caleb that was preaching the fire of God's word. Check this out. This is going to bless you. And I will end with this. Come on, 
That's my Jesus. Did you see that Joshua and that Caleb? Did you see it? Come on, get ready. Because this is what God is doing in this season. He's taking the old and he's bringing the young together. And we are producing a sound that we have never heard before. Get ready for God is coming upon us all. Aren't you excited? So, hey, guys, I hope this bless you. This is the Ritz. Now, information is scrolling along the bottom. Uh, and if, and if, if this word has blessed you, if this word has really touched you, come on, let's sow a seed into it. Let's sow a seed so we can continue to bring forth content like this so that we can build our faith up, okay? Build our faith up on our most holy faith so that we can go into the kingdoms of this world to reap this glorious and miraculous harvest, okay? So, look. I love you guys. Know that you are truly somewhere in the future. And you look so much better than all this stuff that's going on around you. And when J-E-S-U-S is in effect, Jesus is truly by our side. We put that devil in check. This is the Ritz. Love you. See you next time on Perspectives of the Prophetic. Peace.